Thank you. Perfect. Um, so thank you, and uh, thank you to our hosts, and greetings to our distinguished guests. I'm delighted to speak with you today about measuring quality and evaluating lawyer performance in post-conflict and transitional countries. I have a short period of time, so I'm going to get right to it. Uh, so at the International Legal Foundation, we monitor and evaluate our program using various tools. Chief among them is our electronic database system. And so what we're able to do is we're able to track meaningful representation, which Natalie talked about yesterday. Um, and we're able to track the performance of our office, but we're also able to track the performance of individual lawyers. And so we're able to identify strengths of the office and of lawyers, as well as challenges or weaknesses of the office and lawyers, and we're able to create responsive performance plans. We're also able to address systematic impact. For instance, uh, if we're able to we're able to use the system to show that maybe our lawyers are having success at uh, shortening the, the length of time that a trial takes to close, we're able to say that, wow, okay, our lawyers are having an impact on the client's right to speedy trial. And so we can examine what actions the lawyers are taking and reinforce those actions and reinforce those practices. Similarly, if we notice that hmm, maybe our lawyers aren't having such a great, uh, great success and have an impact in that area, we can improve training. We can also address the issue externally, so talking to courts and prosecution about the importance of speedy trial rights, just as an example. And moving to sustainability, um, we can actually address sustainability in a few ways. Um, when we're talking to the ministries of justice, we can use the data that we compile from our case management system to discuss, I think Adil talked about it, cost effectiveness. Um, particularly as ministries are, are struggling to determine is this cost effective, how do we do it, how do we fund it, we can use the data to show an example of a cost effective uh, system. Um, we can also similarly, in those, similar, in those conversations, talk about the impact that legal aid or legal providers have. And we can use that by highlighting um, success under different key indicators, i.e. early access or pretrial detention standards or pre-trial detention measures. Uh, internally, we can use, in terms of sustainability, we can identify high-achieving lawyers and begin to, to teach them super, supervisory skills. So that what we're doing is those lawyers become trainers for younger lawyers, and you're creating an internal supervisory and mentoring program that's sustainable. All right, so how do you measure quality and impact of criminal defense services to the court? And again, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but you want to start by developing reliable indicators. And so indicators are generally, you want indicators to be, at least we base ours on international standards, i.e. the UN principles and guidelines, but you want them to be tailored to, res to be responsive to laws and policies in the countries in which you're working, because you want them to be relevant. Um, and I think Hadil also mentioned, it's about in input, not necessarily outcomes, because as much as we want to you know, control what the court does, we cannot. But we can control the work that our lawyers put in to cases, and that's what we want to be able to monitor. So this is just an example to kind of take you through how we at the International Legal Foundation um, measure performance. And so let's just say the standard is that lawyers must provide effective pretrial representation. So the indicator may be early access to counsel. And then below that, you'll see that the performance measures um, are maybe the percentage of accused that are represented, sorry, it's really small, <laughs> that are represented during the earliest stages of the case, or maybe the percentage of accused that are represented prior to indictment. Similarly, for that same standard, you may have another indicator, i.e. the access to quality, the client's access to quality pretrial representation. And so your performance measurement may be the percentage of accused who are interviewed within 24 hours of receiving a lawyer, or the percentage of bail motions that are filed, or the percentage of cases where defense, con defense conducts investigations prior to indictment. So I want to. So I, I talked about tools in the beginning. So the case uh, electronic case management system is one tool, but another is our mentoring program. And so at the International Legal Foundation, it was described yesterday. We mentor our lawyers. So we don't just say, hey, you know, here are the performance standards. We're going to send you to a couple of trainings. Have at it. Good luck. No, we have daily, constant mentoring of our lawyers. We have mentors going through case by case with our lawyers on their, on teaching them 
not telling them what to do, but teaching them how to think. Um, and they follow that up with observation and feedback, and what that does is it, is it implements performance standards in a meaningful way, in a practical way. And what we also, another tool that we use is performance evaluations. Performance evaluations. Uh, and this is a formal system. So it's not informal evaluations where you kind of talk to the lawyer you know, over lunch or as they're walking to court. We actually, every six months in annual evaluations, we sit down with the lawyer and we talk about, we use notes from the observations and the feedback, but we also use statistics from our case management system to be able to sit with the lawyer and identify with them, so it's interactive, with them their achievements, their successes, and their challenges. And then you're able to create uh, performance plans. Again, all of this is grounded in performance standards. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through really, really through some country office examples. So in our Nepal office, if you can see, major investigations. So in 2013 through 2014, we saw a double, uh, a, a double increase in the major investigations that our lawyers were conducting. And so the question is why, right? Is it you're taking in more cases? Is it the type of cases that you're taking in require more investigation? So in trying to figure out why, what we're doing, again, going back to my earlier comment, we are identifying uh, actions that the lawyers are taking that are resulting in an increase in impact. And we want to reinforce those actions. Okay, so this is an example from our ILF Afghanistan office. And this is an example of how you can actually use monitoring and evaluation to identify trends. And so in Afghanistan, we noticed, if you look, if you look at the chart, it's, it's small, but you can see that over the years, we noticed we were actually getting more access to police stations, but it still wasn't as high as our access to prosecution. And so we knew, we were sure, that we were training our lawyers on early access and how to be effective during those early stages. And so in this particular instance, what we did is we went externally. And we talked to the Minister of Interior, and we created duty desk programs in two of the provinces. Um, and, sorry, excuse me, what happened is, we have duty desks where lawyers are actually in police stations and able to provide uh, advice and counsel to people who are coming in and um, after being arrested. And so we're able to address this trend that we noticed from our database system uh, externally. So this is one last uh, example of impact. And so if you can see in the orange, I'll just start with you. In our ILF West Bank office and our Nepal offices, we're able to show impact. And so I think one of the issues is, uh, is do, do we really need lawyers at police stations? Do we really need lawyers at pretrial representation or for pretrial pre representation? And we're able to show that where bail motions are filed, they're actually being granted. They're actually being granted. So I'm just gonna take you through, through two slides. This is an example of our ILF Nepal database system. As you can see, you can use it to uh, input different data about arrest, uh, information about arrest warrants, the client's name, et cetera. And this is another slide that shows, you know, you can input data from investigation, pretrial hearings, et cetera. And so this system is great because we can track all of this information and uh, print reports that we can use to advocate for our organization, as Hadil mentioned. So the question becomes, what happens when you don't have access to electricity or the internet or your offices are in remote you know, areas, i.e., you know, we're not unfamiliar with that. In our Nepal office, there's only electricity for half of the day. And in Afghanistan, some of our offices are very remote and dangerous to get to. And our West Bank office is new, and so it's young. So we may not have um, the capacity to run uh, extensive case, man case management systems just yet. So we've addressed it, I'm wrapping up, as I was told to do. We've addressed it, <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> We've addressed it in a few different ways. First is we start with the basics. And so we didn't always have this elaborate case management system. We started with Excel documents and Word documents. Um, but most importantly, we started with keeping accurate paper files. Um, and so that even if you don't have the internet, even if you don't have computers, you can still keep a very accurate hard copy of your file. The second is, you know, what happens when you have no electricity or in remote areas? 
We use generators in our Nepal office. Again, I can't underscore the importance of keeping accurate paper files. Um, you can back up to flash drives, Dropbox, um, and you often find that in the center office, the headquarter office in your country, they have greater access to electricity and the internet. So you may be, sorry, okay. You may even want to email the information to your central office so that they can to manage the data. And the final, sorry, the final way that you can overcome, I'm wrapping up, the final way that you can overcome is through uh, training and development. So you want to start immediately. You don't want to wait until you have, you don't want to say, oh, we only have five cases and one lawyer, so it doesn't make any sense to start tracking our data or training on the importance of this issue. So you want to start doing that immediately. And one last point is you want to uh, conduct oversight and monitoring of your system. And so you want to do cross-checking between the paper files and the electronic monitoring system just to ensure that they're accurate. Because if you don't have, a if you don't have reliable data, you cannot advocate for your program.